you're officially looking at my quarantine nails the only thing that i'm battling with or i'm struggling with are my thumbnails they keep breaking and i think it's because they're the most dominant when it comes to like typing on my phone <laughs> so they're more vulnerable but yeah these are my nails grabbing my manicure kit i reach out for my nail file and my cuticle cutter if you've seen my dubois haul you've seen this nail kit and where i got it so i got it from dubois road just in case you're wondering So the first thing that I do is to cut out my cuticles and any hang nails just so I can make sure that I'm starting off with a clean canvas. Next I go in with my nail file and shape my nails. My natural nails grow in the box shape so I just try and like maintain that shape. I also try to maintain the filing on one direction which takes up a lot of time but I guess it's worth it because it does maintain the nail. It doesn't break easily because filing back and forth does ruin the nail so taking your time and filing one side is worth it in the end And these are how my nails are looking, my filed nails. Next, I reshape my nails. Smile lines, I found out they're called smile lines, one of my uh, salon visits. So, yeah, I do that by pushing them back and they end up looking cute. Once I'm done with that, I just set aside the tools and I show you guys my nail polish collection. They're all from Luron, which is a local brand. This is a two-in-one top add base coat. And this is a blush pink. The number is 32. I remember when I was buying this polish, I was in a very nude phase in my life. So yeah. <laughs> next is this perfect nude shade it's a brown chocolatey shade it's number 115. next up is this green it's more of a mint green but i like to call it nude green um, or ash green yeah it's number 111. And then the last one is this white polish that i feel like everyone should have a white polish in their household <laughs> and then for the bonus polish is this glitter it's actually kind of done like i can't use it but yes i just wanted to show you guys what i used to pair up with the blush pink so what i'm doing right now is just going over all my nails with the base coat
and this is how they look with the base coat on. Next I'm trying to measure how long my nail gets on this sponge like thing for separating your toes when you're doing your toe pedicure. I'm using this because I don't have the proper tool which is a sponge that is a wedge like the wedge beauty sponges so I have to improvise with whatever is in the house but I kind of found out that this is too stiff for me to use it um, so you'll see later on what I end up using to create this ombre effect Like I had mentioned earlier, this sponge was too stiff because it wasn't meant to do this job. So it wasn't bending and curving and getting the product into the folds, like in between the nail and the cuticle. So it didn't turn out so well, even though I did try. I tried to give it a fair chance. So what I ended up doing was improvising with this household sponge. I cut it up into small pieces and that's what I used to create the ombre effect. This worked much better but it left some holes on my nail, like whole texture on my nail which I didn't like. Another thing I didn't like was that this sponge felt like or looked like it was picking up less product so I ended up packing and packing more product but in the end when I was applying I realized it was going on really thick so my advice for you would be to go light hand just it might seem like it hasn't picked up product but it has so I'd rather you do like light coats over and over than doing like two or three heavy coats like do five light coats to create that ombre effect what i did like about the sponge is that i could squeeze and push it in between the crevices and get my whole nail covered which i liked and also the line of demarcation or the blending line of demarcation was much better compared to the first tool that I used. And this is how they look once my hands are done. So I only used one sponge and I guess that is enough for one setting. So now I want to use these Q-tips to clean up the edges. Now there is... Um, 
some glue like thing that is usually placed around the nail before you do this ombre thing but clearly I don't have that in the house this is DIY at home nails <laughs> I'll also be using these toothpicks. I'll cover the ends with uh, cotton wool so that I can finesse the, or uh, do some detailing. Yes, that's the right word, detailing after the first round of cleaning is done. After applying the nail polish remover on the Q-tip, just use a firm hand to remove the excess nail polish this will work way faster if you apply some pressure so don't be afraid to apply pressure and yeah just take your time with this I ended up using eight q-tips for the entire set so yeah at this point I was one debating whether I should use the toothpicks or not so I ended up putting them to the side as I think about it <laughs> applying top coat did help diminish some bumps I could still see some holes and bumps but it is not that prominent like it was before I feel like next time I'll just get a better sponge to get even awesome results. And this is how they look guys. So I decided to stop being lazy and just do the second round of cleaning up. And I must say it looked way better after doing the second round. It looked more profesh. Using my herbal infused coconut oil, I rub that all over my hands. My hands have been dry throughout this time because you know, you're not supposed to use oil or have oily hands when doing this. So I massage that all over my cuticles and just give myself a nice hand massage. And this is how they look. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.